All right. Love them. <laughs> Thanks for coming out on this cold night. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's a, it's a big ask when you've got an autoimmune condition to, to come out. Um, yeah, so the first thing I, ha I have to say is that I don't have an autoimmune condition. I haven't had um, pain that a lot of my clients have had, uh, but I'm very interested in why someone's immunity turns on them. Uh, I really believe that the body can heal itself under certain conditions. Um, but what's really interesting about the people that I've been working in, on with autoimmune conditions is when we look back in the background, there's always been a trigger. Yeah. There has always been a trigger and some of those triggers are different. There might have been an illness, there might have been a trauma, there might have been you know, any number of things that might have stemmed from childhood. And of course, there can be some, um, some bodily reasons why people tend, like sometimes these things run in families, so there can be that genetic link. Yeah. But genetics itself doesn't mean you get it, you have to switch that on somehow. So if you switch it on somehow, you can switch it off somehow. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the bit that really excites me. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I guess when I stand in front of you, not having had an autoimmune, people can say, well, you really don't know, and it's probably true, you really don't <laughs> know. But um, let's have a think about what you want covered, because this is for you guys. So what's, what's some of the things that you want covered in the, in the evening? Energy. How? Yeah. I'll put it on this little one. I'm wondering if you'll come up with the exact same list that last time I held this. Anything else? Um, exercise. Yeah. How, how to exercise with autoimmune. How, yeah, how to exercise yeah. with autoimmune without becoming so fatigued that you're yeah. slumped for the next few days. Absolutely. Um, food, nutrition. Yeah. and how to deal with the stress of it. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure stress is what causes it, but then it also, it's like a circle. It makes my stress worse because I feel like it. Yeah. So they're my main things that, yeah. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Energy levels, exercise, nutrition, managing stress. Um, one of the things that came up in the previous thing that I, I did was around um, sleep too and how do you... I actually can't believe I forgot that. That's probably yeah, number okay. one. <laughs> sleep. That would be number one for me. Yeah. So how do you get the sleep um, and wake, wake refreshed? Up, wake up like you feel like you've slept. Yeah. 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 So some of these are really complex, as you know. Um, yeah, really complex, but there's no quick fix with all our new stuff. There really isn't, so that's bad news, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, first I just want to talk a little bit about what functional health is, um, because that's where I sit. So, we've got the medical approach, yeah. and the medical approach is... Uh, I think my text is going to run out during this. So, we have something that... Let's, let's look at cortisol levels because we were just talking about that. Cortisol being quite low or quite high. Now these are both medical conditions that can be really, really high, really, really low. And a doctor would put you on some medication for that. And you would need to be on some medication if you were really, really high or really low. Then in the middle here, you've got this stage called the optimal. So optimal health. Okay, that's a nice place to be, isn't it? That's where you're healthy. Yeah. Functional health is this space in between and, and beyond. Um, but we're really interested in this space here because the doctor will tell you that you're not needing medication and you're not. But if you are heading that way, we really want to address it. Um, and we wouldn't look, as, as holistic personal trainers, we won't look at just one thing. 
We don't look at just cortisol. Yeah. We look at the whole person, the way you're living, what you're telling us, and it's a very, um, I guess, respectful way of looking at your your health. Yeah. Um, and we don't draw conclusions based on any one thing. It's just like, well, this is looking pretty low. Is that how you're feeling? How do you know if it's low or it's high? What are like what would you feel like if it was low or what would you feel like if it's high or are the symptoms the same yeah if it's if it's not optimal yeah they're, they're quite similar yeah um so for, for someone that's high um they can feel um physically in their body they can be a little bit um fluttery in the heart yeah um the eyes can be dilated yeah they can feel very um very zippy very sort of revved yeah. Up. Yeah. Um, usually what comes with that is slumps as well yeah. um, and when you're looking at someone with, with low cortisol it's it's what you would expect you know more fatigue um, like a sloth that's what I feel like yeah it's very yeah. slow moving yeah so when we do cortisol we look at actual saliva four times over a day okay yeah so there's range that it should fall within. You should wait with your cortisol high and it should go down as the day goes. Um, and it should be low at night because that's when you want to sleep. So yeah. you want, that's why people are tired with low cortisol, right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, their body's like, it's hot, they'll sleep. Which is how you should be at the end of the day and then you sleep and it bumps back up again. Um, what we see with this is a number of things. So there's, there's a range, as I said, going from high to low. Um, for some people, they are higher than the functional range, right through. Okay. okay they're just they're, they're really um, fired up kind of people. Yeah. They might be caffeinating a lot, because caffeine's a stimulator for... Which is what I was doing a few months ago. Yeah. I had yeah. way too much coffee in a day just to keep going. Yeah, and, and that's, that's part of the... Problem, problem isn't it yeah. yeah it becomes a cycle yeah so I've seen people who are very wake very high and then they plummet so we take it like 8 a.m. Um, 12 4 and 8 p.m. so they might start really high and then they plummet and then they might end up right down here yeah so they go down to, yeah there's, there's lots of variations um, they might start too low and just keep bottoming out yeah, that sort of thing. So mine goes, I feel like I go up and down mm -hmm. and then I'm either completely exhausted around 8 o'clock yeah. and I need to go to bed or it'll be 11.30 and I'm completely wired. Right. And I, can, wow. I get so much energy at night. Yeah. And I'll so start That's crazy, doing. isn't it? And is that yeah. with caffeine? <laughs> no, I haven't actually had coffee in three months now. Oh, really? Yeah, You're I haven't. still getting those symptoms. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. All right, so that's that's a bit of a, just a little bit of a talk on, on functional health. So just, yeah, trying to get into that non-medicated range, but sort of like, hey, there's a problem here. Yeah. Um, and cortisol is a good example, because we're talking about autoimmune and, and cortisol will be affected when there's, a, when there's an autoimmune condition. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, which is what I've come to the conclusion in the last few weeks that it's adrenal fatigue yeah. that I'm yeah. on the verge of and yeah, yeah cortisol. Yeah, but so this know. idea of adrenal fatigue, it's, it's, a, it's a very common way of describing being very tired all the time. Yeah. Um, there's a thing called the HPA axis. So, uh, hypothalamus, pituitary, um, adrenal axis which over arches uh, a lot of your hormone production okay. and it's it's that that um, system has a dysfunction it's it's not working it might be uh, taking hormones from other functions in the body and yeah. cortisol is the devil for this because it, like the body is amazingly good at creating cortisol so what it will do um, is when you start running out of it in your like over a year or something when you've yeah. been under the pump for so long, which yeah. describes people who have had children and not enough sleep and not working and you know all these um, combinations of issues yeah. um, that come up. Um, 
Yeah, so that the cortisol look, is sought out from another part of the body. Sex yeah. hormones. Yeah. So you know we're talking about sex hormones. Yeah. Yeah. It it will take from the sex hormone system to mm -hmm. develop the cortisol. So it's it's pretty cool because it's got its priorities. It's yeah, and it's good to know that. Mm, that is actually happening as, yeah. well, as awful as it is. It's good to know that you get a few answers. That's, as that's well. kind of a healthy response to yeah. an unhealthy yeah. way. So, so yeah. with food changes, like mm. there is a way to, I don't know, not fully fix it, but you can improve your symptoms yeah, definitely. without medication. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, depending on where you are. So. You were telling me about where your thyroid was at, was you were in a functional, um, concerning range. Yeah. Okay, you're not in an optimal when you're talking about three, three point anything, four point anything. I think over five. four to five usually they'll yeah. start medicating. Um, I think on the doctor. It, it fluctuates all the time, so that's why. Yeah, they yeah. Want. It needs to constantly be re checked because if the medication is working, then it's going to drop. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's that. Um, I think I'll just, I'll stick with my script for a little bit. Yep. So, and we'll come back to all the signs and symptoms and, yep. and, and issues. Um, but one of the things when I created this, I thought, what do you want to know about the medical profession? And um, one of them is the, the more specialised the doctor, the further away they get from being holistic. Yep. So they start, you know, this is a good thing if, if you have a dysfunction in, in the body, but I think, uh, I think it's fair to say that for um, when doctors start delving down into a neurotransmitter pathway or a supplement pathway, they, they, can, they get so uh, focused on on that and they forget the simple things like are you sleeping well are you on your screen at night you know these are like I've actually just bought <laughs> an alarm clock so mm. I can keep my phone in the kitchen yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah so you're on it you're you're, you're doing a good I job. only just did that today yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'll give you an example of this and I have a client who has a, a liver issue and that doctor said to her that food would not improve her liver function. <laughs> so, um, first thing that comes to mind was, well, let's just leave you on lollies and alcohol and see what that does for your health. Now, what that doctor's thinking about is the measure for which she is going to, to that doctor for that yeah. advice. And he's, you know, on some level, he's right that food won't change that. But you've got to look at the whole person, and we don't want her to have diabetes no. or cirrhosis of, of liver. Yeah. So we don't, yeah. So I just think that's that's the diet should be included. Absolutely. As well. Yeah. So that's a that's a powerful statement for a doctor who yeah. to say that food's not going to improve your lot, and yeah. it's, it's just like that's just. Crazy talk. Yeah, no, is. <laughs> food, yeah. diet is everything. Nutrition now. I'm yeah, realized. yeah. The other thing about doctors, um, and I'm starting to sound like Dr. Hayer, but I'm not. It's it's not that, but they have a, a very strong, overarching, controlling body. This is a good thing. Agreed. <laughs> they need to be controlled. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have euthanasia all over the place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I digress. Um, but they have to stick within those guidelines. Which is what I've realised with a lot of the things. Yeah. They, they do have to follow the rule book. Yeah. As much as and you they want to. Doctors with different expertise. So yes. um, you may go down an integrative health path with a doctor who has specialised in more naturopathy and yeah. other approaches. Still quite clinical, still quite medical. Yeah. But you'll be having quite a different conversation and probably a much longer consult. Which is what I've just done recently. Yeah. 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 But then my normal doctor is like, get off that natural stuff. Okay. Completely against it. 
So yeah, it does come down to their personal beliefs as well. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the whole medical thing is a science, you know, you have to prove this to, yeah. you know, you have to have an evidence base. If you're going to ask someone to take a pill, you have to have proof. But it, can't, it comes back to, to this bell curve that some people will respond very well to that and some people, you know, won't respond very well to that. But yeah. the majority of people will respond quite well, and it's based on the majority. But the other thing when, they, when they're when testing um, different drugs and supplements and, uh, or more drugs uh, is a thing called the placebo effect. Have you heard of that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So they have to test drugs against a placebo, which means you're not having the drug, but you think you might be having the drug. Yeah. And they have to test that against the actual drug, people yeah. who have the actual drug. And no one knows whether they have the drug or the placebo. And then they have to look at the results. Okay. So the problem I have with medicine is once you give people hope, a third of people will respond as if they've had, or up to a third of the people will respond as if they've had the drug and they haven't. They've yeah. got the belief. Yeah. So the mind is a really powerful thing. It is. Yeah. Louise Hay, I don't know if you've heard of her, she's, um, she writes a lot of books about the mind and how you can change your life with mm. the way you think. Yeah, pretty untapped. <laughs> pretty untapped. So, um, yeah, I guess the point is doctors can be barred. Yeah. You know, they may have a philosophy Euthanasia is a good example. Another good example is, um, have you heard of Dr. Fecky? I think his name is up in Launceston. Have you heard of him? No. No, he was a, he was a surgeon and he was lopping off um, body parts for people with diabetes and, and he said, change your food! <laughs> Yay! Um, and he was, he, yeah, he had a big case to answer for. And I'm not sure if he was disbarred, but he was certainly smacked very loudly on the on the wrist for saying such a thing. Um, sometimes the evidence base hasn't caught up. No. And when you're a surgeon locking bits off, you that's there's no joy in that. You're going to look at other other things, and you can be criticised and disbarred. You can be barred from being a doctor for moving outside your area of expertise. Yeah. The um, if I went on hormone replacement tablets, yeah, I believe that it wouldn't do a thing unless I controlled the stress and changed my diet. Yeah. Well, it's a place to start, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would help, but I think it is a whole package, which is why I'm here today. Because yeah, it is a whole package. It's not yeah. just the what the doctors can give you, it's, the, it's yeah, everything. Yeah, before we start medicating, let's look at some lifestyle things yeah. that are simple. Yeah. Probably not as simple as popping a pill, but before we do It'd that. It would be nice to have the quick fix and just be done with it and on the yeah, way, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. and, and certainly there's some people who need the tablet, Yeah. Um, no doubt, but um, yeah, let's let's look at the lifestyle first, yeah. um, and see what we can do there. Yeah. Um, because drugs come with side effects, mostly. Yes. Mm. And um, yeah, I have a friend who, who is so sensitive to medications that yeah, she she reads it all because she's to know what's coming. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not optimal. No. No, I don't even like taking Panadol unless I need to. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so um, I guess we need to recognise that doctors are trained in medicine. You know, they're doctors in medicine. Um, at, but, and many of them have, you know, great hearts. Like, I love my GP. I think she's amazing. Yeah. Um, but you only get a 15 to 20 minute consult. Yeah. Um, and I couldn't do much in a 15 to 20 minute consult. 
I think they're fantastic in a lot of things, but I think yeah. autoimmune, I think it does. It it's a longer. complex, it is. in depth process yeah. that needs to yeah. be examined. Yeah. Personal trainers, our overarching body is not compulsory, um, it's not overly strong or authoritative. So while doctors can't sell their services on with testimonies, for example, yeah. PTs can. Yeah. PTs have what is called a scope. So we have a, like a guideline of what we can say and what we can do. And nutrition is actually outside that guideline. Really? In terms of diets, like me telling you what you're going to have for breakfast, lunch, tea, yeah. Um, uh, that is out of scope. And when you think, you, you know, there's a lot of PTs selling keto and low carb and, you know, it's, they're out of scope. They, yeah. they just are. Um, so that, that's a risk for each um, PT to, to undertake. Yeah. Um, my philosophy is around the clean eating. Yeah. Um, because we know that the processing of the food is the problem. Which is what I've just realised in the yeah. last few weeks. It's it's the preservatives. It's yeah. all those middle shelves in the yeah. supermarkets. Or the many stages something has gone through before it yeah. gets to the shelf. That stuff shouldn't be in our bodies. It yeah. shouldn't be in our food. Yeah. It's or at least minimise. Mm. Yeah. I had a client once who said to me, um, she was very clean eater, and um, right down to she had a farm and she would, um, you know, they would, farm their own meat and, and so on and um, she said you can have anything you like as long as you cook it from scratch and I just put my hand on my hip and I said that's ridiculous because half those foods are cooked in a lab and as soon as I said it I was like oh <laughs> that's right you can't cook a lot of those things because they are created in a lab yeah so yeah it was a bit of a lesson all right, um, let's have a little think about what, okay. Okay. take that off now, what is stress? Because when I talk about stress, often other people um, think of the more obvious things, but they, I think we can bang up a list here. What stress? If I say, what are the stresses in your life? Let's jot them down. Oh, where do I start? <laughs> um, well, you've seen food, yeah? Food, yeah. Yeah. I never real. I've always eaten pretty healthy, but I never realised how bad it's healthy I did it's healthy. It, that's exactly <laughs> right, yeah. 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 Um, and how much I didn't eat. So yeah, food, sleep. I don't know how to sleep ever since I've had kids. Yeah. I still wake up and go and check them and even if they're fine, I'll still wake up and um, just day-to-day -day stuff like getting ready, getting the kids ready in the morning. So that is it. And that shouldn't stress me, but when I'm really tired and really run down, mm. it is very, very stressful. Yeah. Um, the environment. I think for me, myself, that's a huge stressor. I don't get away from the busy cars and, I, yeah, I just don't get into nature enough. Pollution, yeah. Yeah. Especially in winter, like you walk outside or open your door for a second and it absolutely stinks from all the wood heaters and Smoke, yeah. it's... Smoke's a big one, like when we had the bushfires um, at the that, beginning of the year. That was awful. That was amazing how I could see that impacting on my clients who live over here. Yeah. The fires are over, you know, I mean it's affecting us all. Yeah. But the levels of fatigue in my clients yeah. during that smoky time yeah. um, was amazing. Even you know? mentally, the stress from being like mm -hmm. feeling claustrophobic, seeing the bridge start to disappear. Yeah. 
it's yeah that was all really new to me I've yeah. never experienced that yeah so have we got some other things to put on that list I've got weight because yeah. I've got autoimmune so weight is a big stress for me yeah so I find it very hard so I'm going to um, just divvy this up a bit to two too light, too heavy. Yeah. Because both are an issue, and what I'm really meaning is the lifestyle around dieting. Yeah. Which I find mostly with people with autoimmune, they're on the heavy side, yeah. not the light side, despite dieting. Um, I think you it's know, because, just, well, that's another stress there because you see so many different diets coming out yeah you don't know who to believe and you're so eager to get some help and to yeah. just lose a couple of kilos or even 500 grams just to feel that little bit better yeah but it's just you don't know where to start yeah so there's a bit of overwhelm there yes yeah some other things you've mentioned Travelling for me is a big thing, yeah, because I am I push myself to go away with the family every, every year, but I get quite worried leading up to the months of it that I'm, I really have to make sure that I eat right and get enough sleep in the months yeah, before. Okay. Is that overseas? Are you talking? No, no, no. it's only, yeah, only yeah. to the mainland and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I yes. was just thinking of, you know, people who are going into different time zones. And oh, I would love to, but I'm too scared to. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's over. a goal. It's a yeah. Yeah. Time zone travel. Um, shift work. Yes. Shift work is hugely, hugely stressful in terms of disrupting in the natural yeah uh, way of of sleeping yeah. and waking yeah. Mm. And that's stressful enough in itself for people yeah. without autoimmune. Yes. All these things. Oh, that, definitely. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, 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 I do have a, um, uh, a person in my life, let's say, who's autoimmune, I think, was triggered by shift work. Because mm. that constant demand to be awake when they want to be asleep and asleep when they want to be awake. Uh, we mentioned hormones. So, and I'm not talking, you know, normal happy hormones. I'm, I'm talking about hormones that have got yeah. out of whack yeah. for one reason or another, whether that's endometriosis or um, birthing of a child is a hugely stressful event. Yeah. Um, and of course, when we talk about stress, there is a level of stress which is good for us, so I, I acknowledge that, but you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about where we tip the scales. My autoimmune and my psoriasis wasn't around seven years ago. It was from when I had kids. Yeah. And it is, it's because you definitely think about them so much. Yeah. You, the kids are constantly there, like you can't switch oh, it yeah. off. So you just, you don't get that mental break to yeah. relax. Yeah. Um, I have a client whose stress manifests in her skin. Yes. So we see that and we know it's coming. Which is, yeah, <laughs> this is what's happened to me at the moment yeah. as well. So it's, and my thyroid does that as well. So I'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. But I know that when I start to get really nauseous and fatigued and I end up in bed for a week and my psoriasis starts to flare up, yeah. I know that it's all gone hand yeah. in hand. Yeah. Have you examined the toxic load of what's going on with your skin? Not really. No, so that no. might be a place to examine. Yeah. I went to an awesome workshop by um, Alex Stewart, I think. I had her book upstairs that was run by um, Kimberly at the Rabbit Hole. Have you heard? No, I heard. Um, yeah, so there's some local um, 
Kimberly's uh, local um, might be able to help you that skin. Yeah. But there's quite a few people, like, once you start creating that awareness yeah. that what's going on with the skin may be part of the problem, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll find that there, there are lots of resources out there to help you with that. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. That's why I use the doTERRA stuff and I've named some, some um, body butters. Okay. And so on. Oh, there is no going back once you. <laughs> I have a lot of friends that use the doTERRA. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, buddy up with them. They make the make their own wipes and stuff. Yeah, and exactly. And, yeah. 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 I would like to get into those. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? There's one step at a time. Yeah. We've got to prioritise. <laughs> I need to work on sleep and food at the moment. That's what I'll be doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so what else have I got on my little list here? I think we're, we're pretty... Oh, yeah. Um, illness, of course. Just whether you've got, you know, the flu or, or something that can... Yes, the common cold. Every yeah. winter, it runs you down, you get yeah. that, and then you're zonked for months. Yeah, and it can affect cortisol levels and yeah. other hormone levels. Yeah. Consequently. Um, and the other one... Um, um, musculoskeletal stuff. So uh, what I mean by that is you uh, um, have scoliosis. <laughs> um, My arthritis. My husband is. He hurt his back a few years ago. Um, he's had to have steroid injections, but that was a big stress on him and the whole family. Pain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, medications on there? No. And for medications, even though we need them. Some of them are toxic. You think chemo drugs, things that have nasty side effects that you must have. You know, you still got to live in that body with that that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that can be a, a full year getting back to a homeostasis. Yeah. Um, with some of these nasty medications that we need to survive, but you know, when we're talking about optimal health. They take you a long way from it. Yeah. Keep you alive though, so you've got another chance. <laughs> mm. Alrighty. So, as I mentioned to you, the Kazan approach. Have you heard of that word no. before? No. So the Kazan approach is um, it's actually a It's a Japanese philosophy that came out of wartime uh, where the Japanese recognised that they had to get back into the world market and they were going to do this bit by bit. Yeah. Um, in their workstations they were going to just work on little habits and make things better and better and better and better. So yeah. not throwing out the, the baby bath. Um, is that the expression? Anyway, <laughs> just looking at little incremental steps. Yeah. Okay, I think other ways that it might have been said is inch by inch, it's a cinch. How do you eat an elephant <laughs> one bite at a time? <laughs> um, I've heard people say pick the low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah. Do the easy things first that give you the best bang for buck. So when you look at that list, what did you say? Sleep and food. Even drinking enough water. Ah, I didn't even think about nice. that. Water. Yeah. I'm a lot of my the time when I'm really fatigued and run down, it's because I'm dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting. It comes into toxins because some people talk about, you know, they need to have filtered water, whereas other people are in the other camp, you know, you need the fluoride in there and yeah. and so on. I think you've got to look at your your own 
health and make decisions about that. Yeah. Um, on the weekend, I saw some people uh, getting large amounts of uh, water from the creeks um, that were running down off the mountain. Yeah. So I was curious about that, whether that was for a health condition or perhaps cooking or something where they don't want chemicals in it. Yeah. Some people are so sensitive. Um, I'm not. I have what's known as a robust and resilient system, so I, you know I really don't get sick. So for me, looking at my quality of water, I send the cocoa okay with the water I'm on. If I have an autoimmune disease, I might be looking at filtering it. I don't know. Our fridge does have a filter. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like everything is toxic to me at the moment. I feel Do like you? inside is just so rock bottom yeah. that I, there's too many chemicals and pollutants and everything in the world and in our food for me to fully detox. I'm finding it really hard to find the resources yeah. to shop around, to get stuff that isn't, doesn't have pesticides in it. It's, yeah. I'm finding it really, really hard to get there yeah. because the world is just full of it. Yeah. So part of coming to this is going yeah. to do a free consult um, with me. Okay. So we might okay. look at sourcing um, yeah. the, the best that we can do for you locally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah that's um, to get that get the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Happening. Yeah. Um, so that's our priority area. So. Hmm. What are we going to do with this? Tell me your best way to get a good night's sleep. Are there any habits in there? I don't think there is. I think my body just does what it wants to do. Yeah. No matter what I try. If, try I, random. if I leave my phone down and don't touch it and go to bed at 8.30, some nights I can be so tired and I'll go to sleep within a second. Mm -hmm. Other nights I'll lay there for two hours and my mind is just going non-stop. And then I'll yeah. go to sleep for 10 minutes and I'll feel like I've had hours and I'll wake up and it's only 11 o'clock. Yeah. Um, I can do that and wake up nearly three times a night. I can read a book and go to sleep really quickly while I'm fall asleep while I'm reading it. Um, and sleep with three hours and then other nights I can play on my phone for right a few until, hours right up until my eyes close yeah. and yeah. I'll sleep until seven o'clock in the morning yeah but every morning I wake up no matter how much sleep I get or how little I get I wake up and I just feel nauseous instantly because I'm so tired yeah yeah okay. so I try and tell my mind yeah like, you're not tired wake up, you're okay, it's a good day, but I still it just it Yeah, work. it sounds like you've got a really good mindset around that. Have you have you looked into um, into different meditation styles? That is when I'm really good, I go to yoga, I've got a fantastic yoga teacher in Seven yeah. Mile. Um, but yeah, when I'm really good I walk, I go to yoga, I meditate, really just relax and ground myself walking along the beach mm. um, and I feel like I go really well for a while there but then I feel like the autoimmune just takes over it's like no you can't feel this good yeah and then I just crash yeah and then it takes me months to get back into it again yeah yeah so the thing with autoimmune uh, actually I just thought of another one because there was a lady who had anxiety she just had an underlying anxious nature I get that um, because of my because I feel so sick. Yeah. That when I don't feel sick and yeah. I'm getting sleep and I can exercise and yeah. the anxiety is not there at all. Yeah. I guess with the autoimmune and this is the this is the this is the crux of it, folks, in Facebook land. <laughs> the crux of it is all of these things are a stress. Yeah. So if we can cross off Things, if we know we can cross, cross them off, we cross them off. And then we chip away. So it might be while we're having good sleep, we don't focus so much on the other things that yeah. we might be able to address. Okay. So there's massive amounts of research 
at the moment going into the brain and meditation and gratitudes and and all that the power of the mind yeah um, and it's a very exciting area and it's only recently like in the last couple of months that I heard it's useful to meditate in the morning <laughs> okay so I think a lot of us are using meditation at night to like oh I've had this crazy day yeah um, and got through the day and then it's like right I'm gonna meditate and calm the farm and, and go off to sleep and then worry why wonder why their eyes pin open because for you know nine or ten hours during the day they they, they weren't calm yeah so if we can start the day and actually think about it and yeah. then relax your shoulders and stop clenching your jaw mm -hmm. you realize how tight and strong you are all day yeah a, a dear friend of mine has this analogy of of the buckets and she says you you pick the buckets up and you carry them around all the time yeah um and this is you know metaphorically kids she's talking about um, so you put the buckets down and you stand up and you and you forgot how good it is to move without the buckets. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the meditation has a has a role. Yeah. To play in. I managed to get up early enough. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm scared to get up an hour earlier because I feel mm. like I would mm. crash. I think it's okay now my kids are at school, but yeah, like going to work and stuff. It's scary thought to get up an hour earlier you've, you've got to watch that you're not yeah, robbing yeah, that's, Peter to pay, yeah. to pay Paul um, my, one of my mentors said to me um, she wanted me meditating more because that's when you get into a more creative yeah. um, learning um, brainwave yeah. and she she wanted um, that for me and I, I said I don't have time to meditate for 40 minutes and she said I want you to knock off one of your workouts um, a week just yeah. take one completely out and and do a meditation yeah and I was just like, really because I'm a mover <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, but I took her advice and it, it was just like and that's when I started to like oh my god I'm actually calmer yeah um, and then some of these other stresses these busyness ones because we could probably expand that in this day and age nobody stops no no we could probably expand that busy yeah. one um you know 50 different ways of yeah. all the ways that we're trying to to live and you know what we haven't put on here we haven't put on like relationship stress or money stress yes we haven't even put um those on here Relationships. Uh, we haven't put alcohol on there. And the more things we can put on here and recognise that, or oh, actually, I am drinking, you know, four or five nights a week. It's only it's only a glass, but you know, people have big glasses these days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <A> bottle. <laughs> it's a bit more than one. Um, and so, you know, just trying to chip back yeah what we've got there um and that all comes down to being busy as well does and sometimes you know what and this is another one of those light bulb moments sometimes we're too busy and we have to in some way stop stop yeah and yeah good luck with making that decision but it is a decision and you've got an order I mean and you've got to pick your yeah it, that's the way to get the best life you can is to really pick and choose what you're going to yeah to do I think you hear it from a lot of people as well but I think when you're really ready you mm. know it's exactly what you need to do yeah like now I've heard people have said like you need to meditate you need to relax yeah. stop stressing but because my body, I feel like I've hit the lowest of low with my yeah. energy levels. I've got nothing else to lose. Like I, yeah. I'm like, I need to do this. So yeah. I'm actually really keen to go home and go to bed and then wake up and meditate. Yeah. 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 
because um, I sent you uh, I sent you meditations, didn't I? Most yeah. of those are ten minutes long. Yeah. So yeah, you know that like um, I think when when you start meditating, you you know if you can do half an hour meditation, good on you. I couldn't. Yeah. You know, I had to work up to that. Yeah. Um, I had to to accept sitting still and being calm. I think meditating as well. For me, it's very hard to switch my brain off, and I did learn a while ago that meditating even if it's not just sitting there it can be walking along the beach yeah. it's, it's finding that calm in any way that you can yeah yeah and you mentioned um um you know this the, the green time you know yeah. less green more green yeah yeah uh, i know I, I i must be in a meditative state when i walk my dog yeah because i really i listen it's a very multi-sensory walk you yeah. know I'm, I'm listening I'm you know I'm watching him I'm, um, and I always get to the same part of the walk where my dog chases off to this other dog that's on the, on the other side of the fence and every time I'm like well oh, it surprises me every time because, because I'm so chilled out and I'm so chilled out yeah so yeah um, I had a client who um, she worked in Moona and she lived in Dodgers yeah. and she had early morning shifts and I, I, in a moment I'll talk about it's a long um, yeah, epigenetic profiles which is a, um, it's another way that you can choose to live but her profile and um, we did her cortisol levels, her cortisol levels were quite high first thing in the morning because she was getting up chugging coffee yeah. um, and you know, you know, quick, you know, get up, out and get off to work. Her epigenetic profile, um, and epigenetics meaning we have a genetic tendency which we can live to, to really reach our full potential and we live within a way that we understand how to live well. Yeah. And it's different for other people. Like some people need to get up and move. Some people need to get up and chill. Yeah. She was in that chill, but she had to get up and move because that's her job. That's my problem because I have to get up and I'm like, quick, have breaky, let's get to it. Shoes on, let's go. Yeah, exactly. And I, I just not sit there with my chamomile tea for five minutes, but yeah. I don't even get to even think. Yeah, not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah, we examine that, but. With her, what we did was we looked at all the other toxins. She had some musculoskeletal stuff yeah. happening. Um, she put on 20, 30 kilos. So we um, got on clean eating, which without her really trying that hard, she was dropping kilos. Yeah. Um, so she started losing weight. We were sorting out her musculoskeletal stuff. She'd had two back surgeries. Okay. Um, and there was a third thing. How did you help with that? Was that just like stretching and exercising and? Yeah, ju just, just, that's what personal trainers should do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but just getting the training bang on and really understanding what had, had gone on. Because I back. go to a chiropractor when it gets really bad. Yeah. But yeah, I was just. Yeah. Yeah, one time. I think she was going to chiro or, I can't quite, you know, I'm getting my clients mixed up now, I think. Um, but yeah, certainly, like I see an osteo, I've got clients that see chiros, yeah. and I put the movement on top of the yeah the shape. Because so, yeah, I think once you get it get aligned, aligned, then yeah. move. Yeah, that's because I don't move after it, so I'm yeah. pretty sure it just slowly goes back in. Yeah, probably yeah. not that slowly too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so so we got a couple of things happening. Yeah, and then oh, she gave up caffeine. Because she was really fuzzy, buzz, buzz. Um, yeah, so once we had done that, we had eliminated a couple of stresses, and then she she was feeling better when she got up in the morning. Okay. Um, so she wasn't she was still allowed to have a, a coffee, but not three before she got to work. <laughs> type of thing. Yeah. So it was just getting having a look at all the stresses in your life and thinking, all right, let's take out this one, this one, this one, and this one. Yeah. Um, because we have to keep the sleep 
the up and early one because that's yeah. her job. Yeah. Um, she worked long hours because she was a manager. Yeah. Um, so they were not negotiables. So yeah, yeah. So she had to change all the other stuff to fit in with yeah. the stuff that had to stay. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have an autoimmune condition. Um, but yeah, that's the way. That's the yeah. In my experience, is it's like let's look at all the lifestyle things and yeah. chip away at the easy ones and and then take on some of the hard ones. Yeah. Um, that, I started with coffee. That was my first one. Yeah. I swear I'm still detoxing from it though. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's only been a couple of months, but yeah, I don't miss it. But I did for the first month. Yeah. I craved it so much and yeah. I'd get so tired. Yeah. And my body had to learn how to keep going. Yeah. Or to eat food. Yeah. Well, we see the hormones will go <coughs> crazy when you're tired. Yeah. They will tell you you're hungry and they'll tell you you're not full. Yeah. As well. They're really, um, you know, they're a lot more active in terms of telling you you're hungry. Yeah. So you're like, you're hungry, you're hungry. And you're thinking, really? I just had all this food. Um, and your your hormones that tell you that you're full. Yeah, leptin and ghrelin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the leptin will be um, quite sluggish to kick in. That's the one that tells you you're full. Yeah. So, you know, there's often, you actually get so much without good sleep. Yeah. There's a lot of hormonal chaos. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So what I thought we might do is do some, um, some movement. Okay. Which, um, this is called working in instead of working out. Yeah. And the value is that you're addressing a number of things. So sometimes with my clients, like you can see weights all over the place. They might not do weights, we might do working in because they're tired. Yeah. So like when they come through the door, they tell me exactly how they are and we rate their sleep, their food, their movement, the energy they've got, their hydration, their stress levels and injuries. I love that. So That's really good. yeah. So immediately I know she's tired and she's going to be flat because she hasn't drunk enough, but otherwise she's not too bad, she's got low stress. That is so good because yeah. that's what puts me off going, nothing against a lot of PTs, but that's what puts me off going to a lot of places because the other thing, I've got adhesions from two caesareans yeah. and I can't do a plank yeah. because it tears yeah. and um, yeah, they just get you in there and just push you to go, go and go and yeah. It's not always what you need. No, it literally yeah. only kills yeah. you. It's, yeah. And it's not being lazy, it's just physically your body just can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's fantastic that yeah. you take notice of all that. Well, I'll put your little hand out here. Thank you. Um, so you can look at, at some of these. But the first one is... Someone likes the bucket analogy. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> It's probably my friend who says it. <laughs> All right, so standing up. So this is called um, a lymphatic wake up. So your lymphatic being your your glands where a lot of your immunity is. Okay. Um, what's the word generating from? I guess. So um, I, I do this with my top off because it makes a nice slapping noise. So basically, we're going to tap six times here, six times. Six times, six times, six times, six times. Then the other arm, then the inside of the arms. Okay. Then from the ankles, chins. One, two, three, four, five, and then behind the knees. Okay. All right. So we'll do it real quick. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And all 
already a tingly and kind of just blood flowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the one that my um, my client today said that she yeah um, she does regular now because it just really it makes her feel good and yeah. vibrant and so yeah, on. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah, so I that's like that. that's a movement that you can yeah do first thing. All right, so we're going to do some breathing. Okay, so bring in the arms up. Two minutes and breathe down. So the use of breath, we want the breath to inhale as much as it does exhale, or the other way around. Okay. Exhale as long and slow as the inhale. Okay. Yeah, so breathing in. And hands, exhale. Exhale. One more, breathe in. Next one. So feet apart. And then come down and pull up. Up to here, turn the hands out and down. Kind of a bit like Tai Chi, isn't it? Yeah. Breathe in. Beautiful. Next one. Now I do this a lot with um, my clients who've got issues with their backs. Yeah. So they might have disc problems or they might just do an exercise and just feel a bit tight. So it's just a, one client calls these the monkeys. So we just flip around. Little kids standing in the line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're gonna add breath to that. So we're gonna breathe in. And exhale. And breathe in. And exhale. I tell I haven't moved for a while, it's having my ankle, which is probably the last one. Thanks for that. <laughs> so that's um, just three little working in things. Spinal breathing is beautiful. Okay, so we bring out, these are called cactus arms, like a cactus, we breathe in. And exhale, and look up. So when we lift the chin, the thyroid is nice and open, and this is a healing posture and healing exercise for thyroid. Breathing in. So curling up the spine and exhale. And in. And exhale. So when you think about some of the yogic things you've done in the past, there's a lot of this opening up. I was going to say, it's yeah, opening the chest. It's all very, very similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Now, one of the things that happens with, um, uh, let me have a little, with our energy, with our stress, is we get stressed and we get calm. And we get stressed and we get calm. And as long as we get as low as we get as high, it's okay. we should be all right. But what really happens these days is we get up, we don't really come down so far. Yeah. And gradually you end up being higher yeah. and lower, which so is me. It's called sympathetic tuning. You just get stuck in the sympathetic nervous system. Yeah. And it's that exhale, that slowness. I was even doing that, that's very meditating, just to breathe, yeah. to stop and breathe. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope that's useful. I want to talk um, a little bit about the epigenetics, um, just to finish off with, but I might take you over to the 
post it and I'll say goodnight to my Facebook people at this point, but we're going to have a look at the epigenetic profiling of um, pH 360. So um, the handout will be on uh, Holistic Personal Training Facebook group. Um, and I will post this video over to there shortly to thank you everybody in Facebook land. Ooh, a lot of comments, isn't there? <laughs> Finish.